do 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 I didn't realize I did that. Alright. So, we're back tonight with the Mana Trader series. Um, we're closing in on qualifying. Um, we're 10 wins away. We went 3-1 and one last night. Um, series ends the 23rd, so we're probably going to try and get some a lot of games in um, as we're getting closer. Um, so... I've been trying a few different things and I've been playing different stuff lately, but it's been a while since I've played just like traditional burn. So we're just going to run that tonight. Um, oh, excuse me. This is uh, this is the last 5-0 list that I found. Um, the deck is playing 20 lands. I, I'm normally not a fan of that in burn. 20 feels like too much. Um, I normally like to cut a fiery islet and play a one of skull crack in the main. And then uh, cut the fourth skull crack from my sideboard and play an extra smash or a firewalker. Uh, normally a smash because I don't, I, I'm going to be honest, it, and it's probably a lot of my ego, but I don't really feel like I need a fourth firewalker. I feel like I'm pretty good at the burn mirror. I, I say that and I'll get crushed tonight playing the mirror. So it's just stock burn. Um, we're going to start looking for a match right now and try to get going here. Hopefully it doesn't take forever. Wow. All right. I said that and we're already in a match. The Cody Hope. That's who we got the first round. I don't recognize the name off the top, but. And they're fast too. All right, let's jump right in. All right, we win the roll. A high end good luck. We'll be on the play. Um, this hand's really good. We'll keep this. Um, we'll lead on. Um, we're going to play this and say go. Um, we're going to hold up Bolt, or we'll play it at the end of the turn. Uh, just in case they play a one-drop, we might want to Bolt it. So. Arid Mesa into a mountain. Alright, Rift Bolt. Alright, that's good. Um, we'll go ahead and put them to 16. I don't know why our 2 is not working. Um, we're gonna go ahead and shock. No. We're gonna play our Eidolon. Um, force them to go to 14 to deal with it. Or if they decide they want to race, they'll have to go upstairs. Um, normally I'm not a huge fan of running Eidolon into a Rift Bolt that we know is there, but... Okay. Go to 11. Um, we'll try to take this a little slower here. We'll get both of our Swiss Spears out. I doubt they have double bolt in their hand. Um, okay, Lightning Helix 1, go to 14. Yeah, I was like, their hand screamed Lightning Helix... Um, so, and we have 10 points in our hand, so unless they're holding another Lightning Helix, Boros Charm, Skewer, our Swiss Spear, yep. Um, I think we'll say go and just kind of represent here. Um, just kind of hold up like we have skull crack or any any other number of things. See what our opponent does here. All right, we go to ten. All 
So if we draw a land, we win here. Any land will do. Um, our hand panned out pretty well that game. Uh, hopefully they're on the list that's only playing a couple Lightning Helixes, so... So we're gonna sideboard in a lot of our deck, honestly, which is gonna, which is kind of funny to me. Um, okay, we we want to bring all our stuff over here. I like to I like to board this way so that I can see how many cards I'm bringing in. Um, Firewalkers, Deflecting Palm is another Lightning Helix, and you want Skull Cracks, honestly. So cards that are bad. Um, we literally bring in twelve cards in the mirror. I don't. Uh, I have to say I'm a, I'm a little surprised. Our opponent must have been worried about the mirror, or our, our the person we stole the, the list from must have been worried about the mirror. Or maybe this coincidentally lands up really good against a lot of things. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of Eidolon on the draw, so Boros Charms and Lava Spikes don't do anything, and Eidolons are bad on the draw. We can consider some number of them on the play. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to keep this hand. This hand's really good. Uh, we have to take quite a bit of damage, but that's okay. And we don't have a way to deal with a Firewalker if they have one. But our hand's pretty good, so. Goblin Guide's pretty good. Monastery Swiss Spear. Um, so we're going to shock. We're going to play the, our Rift Bolt so that we can either kill their Goblin Guide or their Eidolon. If they play one, a lot of people leave Eidolon in in the mirror. Um, it's a very, it's a personal thing. I'm not a big fan of it personally, but it's a very commonly practiced thing. Take a land. Um, we're gonna go ahead and hit their Goblin Guide. Maybe. Uh, I'd rather control the pace of the game here, and we're going to go to 13 to play a Firewalker. Um, hopefully they don't have a path. They don't have a path, the game's looking okay. Yeah, fire off a Lightning Helix. We go to 10, they go to 23. Um, now, all the canyons aren't going to do us many favors, but it's going to be okay. Uh, I should probably undo heal to this turn. So the question is, if they attack here, yeah, we're not going to block. Um, whatever we take here is going to be worth more, um, because if they skull crack us here, it's a blowout. Um, always yes, always yield. So we go to 12, then we go to 9, uh, now we can 6. And then more than likely we take 2 and go to 7. They skewer us to 5. Suspend Rift Bolt, okay. So we get to play Goblin Guide, gain a life. And then we get to attack. They have a Lava Spike. This then allows us to cast the Skewer, go to 9, suspend our Rift Bolt, go back to 8. Um, and we immediately gain one off the Rift Bolt. Um, we have a lot of lands in our hand, but uh, it's okay. Uh, with three of them being Canopy lands, it's, it's good for us. And as long as they don't peel a path, um, it's looking pretty good. So we go to six here. Skull crack us. Okay, just kidding. Um, to six, to three. So if they draw it, they win. No! Oh, that's right, we knew they had that. Um, yeah, so they did have the skull crack, so they weren't bluffing there. All right. So, again, I think we like the way our hand's set up. Uh, or the way our deck's set up. Um, Boros Charm and Lava Spike don't do anything. And Eidolon's not great. Um, I mean, a, a lot of people argue that, but I think Eidolon's the worst card to have. I think Skullcrack is better than anything else. So, uh, we're going to keep this. Uh, it just kind of worked out that our opponent had the, the Skullcrack there. Um, so, our opponent played that very well. Um, this is a very good hand, so we're going to keep this. We don't have any hate cards or anything, but this is this is a good hand. Our opponent's on six. It your daddy. All right. Mom, that's a weird thing to say, but 
Whatever works for you. I can only imagine that's Noah. Um, our opponent starts out on six. We get to lead on Goblin Guide. Uh, Rift Bolt. Okay. Play your own Goblin Guide. All right. Let's see what we hit here. Swiss, Swiss Spear is really good, actually. Um, and them leading on Mountain ensures that they're not going to play Core Firewalker next turn. And we get to get in for five here. Um, Mountain Boros Charm, okay. And then... As Zoe, hey Zoe, thanks for the follow. I appreciate it, Zoe. For everybody who's curious, that's my sister. I'm definitely uh, plugging my family to follow me on Twitch right now. I'm not going to lie, no shame. Alright, double skewer is kind of rough. Um, we're still in a good spot, though. Path is pretty good. Um... Play that Rift Bolt we know about. I think with the trigger on the stack, we'll fetch for basic. Um, Rift Bolt's a good one. Um, we'll go ahead and path this. We don't want to take any unnecessary damage that we don't need to. And... and uh, Oh, hang on, I'm getting a phone call. All right, sorry about that. Um, so at the end of that last turn, I kind of just tapped out for Skullcrack. Um, I mean, we could just be dead here. Um, oh, actually, we don't know that because they don't have Bolt in their hand because they fetched. So, skewer me. Or a uh, Rift Bolt mean, probably means they have a Skewer in their hand. Um, and if if they don't kill us here, we're not going to play our Skullcrack. Um, because holding up Skullcrack is good for multiple reasons. They tap out to play Firewalker here. Lava spike me? Okay, I don't think we respond there. Alright. Alright, we already got our second match. Uh, matches are going a lot faster than they were last night, so. Alright, we're on the draw for this one. Hi and good luck. Um, this hand is also really good. We don't have any white for our Boros Charm, but this hand's really solid. Um, we either have Rift Bolt or Swiss Spear on turn one, um, and there's a good chance, depending on what they play, that we're going to lead on Swiss Spear. So. Our opponent has no companion. 
Forest. Bobble. Okay, forest double bobble. Triple bobble. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be honest. Kind of at a loss here for what our... I have to imagine it's some kind of traverse shadow deck. I was guessing. Um, so we draw a lava spike. So forest really means that there's like not really anything they could do to kill our Swiss spear here. So we'll take our free point. Um, and then next turn, if they play something we can Searing Blaze, we'll probably take that opportunity. But if not, we'll set up for... Uh, we'll Lava Spike before combat, and then uh, Suspend Rift Bolt. But they're getting a whole bunch of cards right here, so it's God only knows what they could be playing, what they, they draw here. <clears throat> Forest and a Swamp? Alright. Back-to-back <clears throat> -back basics. I don't say this very often, but them tapping out to play like Tarmogoyf right here would be insane. Wow. Wow. Please, no Death Shadow. One time, no Death Shadow. So, if they are not a Death Shadow, a Street Wraith. If they don't have a Street Wraith here, this is just free. So, all right, it's what we like to see. Uh, it doesn't, we don't, <laughs> you don't get that very often in the, <clears throat> in the old burn deck. So, um, we're hoping to draw a land here. I don't think I've ever killed a Goyf with a Blaze. Uh, I've only done it once or twice in my life. So, I, I think that's time number three. That was honestly insane. So I know we're making the Goyf bigger and we're kind of giving away some of our position here, but I think while they're tapped out, we can have an extremely explosive turn. Um, they go to 11. The Skewer puts them to 8. And they're taking 3 going to 5, and then we have 7 points in our hand. So, uh, I mean... Um, I was like, barring them having something really good here, we're probably going to win this game. And block, take three, go to five. Um, we'd really like to draw another burn spell here. Uh, like, preferably a one drop. Okay, they draw a land, they go to four. Boros Charm's just lethal now. Unless that's a scooze and to eat something. Yep. Um, there's two creatures to eat. So, they're not going to attack for five, okay. So, we're going to suspend that. Um, <clears throat> the best they can do is eat two more creatures next turn. Um, because if they have Fatal Push and they eat their Goyf and my Swiss Spear, they go to seven and we have ten points, so... It's looking like this one's locked up here. All right, they have yet to play a non-basic land. Okay. Sacks a creature. Yep. So I can actually only eat one thing here. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and show them so they can concede. Hopefully they'll concede. Why would he minus? Um, honestly, I'm not sure. He was pro... I I guess he was thinking I need to get, like, I need to fuel my scoos. I, like, there's no reason to minus right there. I don't know, honestly. Where do I find the kids who play like this? <laughs> I wish I could find the kids that play like this more often. Okay, so cards that are really good here. All four skull cracks are really good. Um, So, something that people do that I've... Like, honestly, never really figured out is, do I bring in all my paths? Do I bring in all my deflecting palms? Or do I bring in all both of them? I think bringing in both is just wrong, but I'm not sure. I'm going to be honest. I think we're just going to bring in a couple paths. Um, 
<laughs> the world may never know. I mean, I don't like I, I don't know if it's right or wrong to say this is right or wrong kind of thing. Um, and we're on the draw. So honestly, I think we can cut a couple of each creature. Um, and then probably cut a couple Searing Blaze. Uh, Searing Blaze isn't like insane in this matchup, but it occasionally snags something. So I think we try it like this. Um, we'll see what happens. I probably won't change how we boarded uh, after after this, even if we lose. So uh, this hand's got the makings of what we want. We're just uh, we just need to draw a land, and we're on the draw here, and we're playing a twentieth land tonight. Typically, it's just whatever mood I'm feeling between Palm and Path. Yeah, I mean, like seriously, like I, I've won both ways, so. Um, yeah, we'll keep this. We're on the draw <clears throat> in our in our twenty land burn deck, so I think this is I think this has potential to be good. <clears throat> Alright, so he does play non basic lands. He's playing Bobble. I can only assume he's playing Luris in his deck, or he's playing Shadow somewhere. Like I I don't know. Uh Inspiring Vantage is a good pickup. Um we'll suspend the Rift Bolt and say go. Um why are we playing 20? Um, honestly, I'm playing 20 because I just I pulled a list off of Goldfish and was like, let's just let's just play this list and not change anything. So I've never actually tried burn with the 20th land in the Fiery Islet, so I figured I'd give it a try. Um, I I honestly I I think the way that I fair I don't think it's bad. I tried it a couple times. Like I I don't I don't think it's necessarily bad, but I'm not a I'm not a big fan. Like, I really, honestly, like, don't really like the way... Like, I feel like I flood a lot when I play 20 lands. Um, so... I feel like if he had Collective Brutality, he might have shocked and played it. This represents a Fatal Push, I think. Or Liliana next turn. Um, I think we're just going to run it out and see what happens. Uh, they have to go to 15 to deal with it. Okay, they don't have anything, which means more than likely this is a Liliana turn, um, which we're okay with. This could also just be him holding Collective Brutality, and it could be Collective Brutality this turn. Yeah, paying cost this way, it's definitely Collective Brutality. So he net stays the same. Um, and he takes our skull crack, I imagine. So, uh, so we're both at 17 after this, and we lose our skull crack. Just deciding what to pitch, I think. Fulminator Mage. I'm always interested to see if people actually bring in Fulminator Mage, because I know, like, a lot of people that do, and I know a lot of people that don't. So... I've seen it both ways. Take our Searing Blaze. Okay. Alright. I'm interested to see that. So we're going to play this. Um, and then depending on what he does... We're probably just going to cycle our canopy and fire off a bolt at the end of the turn. The the worst card, the card that we don't want to see here is Kalidus. Um, Goyf is, Goyf is tough to race, honestly. I think we're still going to cycle here. Land, please. I mean, that's also not bad. Um, I think that's worth. We go to 15, then we go to 9. Um, I mean, Quagmire's lethal in two turns, so we don't really have a way to stop this. We're hoping to draw a path off the top. Another Scooze is pretty good, so he's going to 13. At least I, I was like, at least I'd be doing that, taking it to 4 to stop that. 
Um, and we're going to 10. Um, and we don't really have a way to win this race. Um, yeah, so, all right. So, I still think the way we have it set up is really good. Um, I don't, I, I can't really see an argument for bringing in the other path. I mean, like, it's possible, but I've played too many games where I've lost to having multiple paths in my hand. Um, so I think we're just going to run it back like this. See what happens. Uh, I mean, to be, to be honest, like, matchups like this are kind of rough. Uh, depending on how their hand scales up. So most of the time we just really need to get kind of lucky. So yeah, we're just going to run it back and see what happens. All right, we're on the play for game three here. So if we draw a land, this hand's insane. Um, but Eidolon on turn three seems kind of rough. So I think we have to mulligan this. Uh, this hand seems a lot better. Uh, we can ship our second Skullcrack. Keep this. Um... Our opponent also mulligans, which is really good. Not going to lie, I'd feel a lot better about this game if they take one more. Alright, six as it is. I think with the Helix, we can shock here. Uh, we'll go to 17. I'll go to 19. Um, they haven't had a push or a Thoughtseize so far. so Or an Inquisition, I mean. Thoughtseize, Inquisition. So I feel like they're kind of due for one, honestly. Hex Drinker. Okay. I would like my hand if my opponent kept mulliganing. <laughs> yeah. So, we want to hold up Skullcrack for the... I actually think we're just going to say go here. I don't really see a reason to... Because he's going he's gonna to hop in front. There's no question about it. And then after, they, after he hops in front, we're going to be forced to Lightning Helix, which is fine. Like, but then it just... Leaves a stone cold dead to. Uh, and honestly, if if we're real lucky, he'll just attack here. I, I doubt we're that lucky, but. So, let's go ahead and fire this off. Go to 16 to go to 19. Um, and honestly, we'd really like to draw a land here to be able to suspend Rift Bolt and hold up Skullcrack. Ask and you shall receive, I suppose. Um, we're going to continue to say go here. Um, and if they play... Liliana. Okay. Ghost quarter your own nurturing peatland after floating a green. Yep. Abrupt Decay means he gets to get in for six. <sighs> it 
so he's essentially at four with the cards in our hand. So, and we're going to 13. Um, we're going to fire it off. We need to, we need to keep putting the pressure on here. Um, Rift Bolt. What does this thing become? A 4-4, four, four, so it's for 8? Yeah, I think that's fine. We'll continue to go upstairs and race. Um, so we're kind of leaving it up to the top of our deck here. 9, it's for 9. Yeah, I can't count. You're right. Good call. It's a good thing he's not playing Jun so he could bolt me. I'm glad you I'm glad you can count Joseph because I can't. So he can level up twice and then get in for nine. And then we're playing and then we're hoping we rip a bolt off the top. Or if he attacks out, if he taps out and attacks out, we're hoping for a a haste creature also does it here. Um, he's probably not going to attack out because he realizes he can't kill me. It was a four with a sorcery in exile. Ah, I got you, that makes sense. Makes more sense. Are you kidding? Joseph is the king of counting. <laughs> Carly's throwing a, a lot of shade in the chat over here. Wow! Yeah, okay, so he doesn't attack out, which is smart. Um, so we're kind of just hoping to draw a bolt here. Any burn spell. Uh... What does it get? Hang on, I have to look up Hex Drinker really quick so that I can know what it gets protection from. Uh, Hex Drinker. What's it get? Protection from instance. Okay, so this is, I mean, Eidolons, oh, instance, then everything. Uh, the good news is that, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so Eidolon locks them out of making plays. Um, and if they want to be able to lock us here, they have to attack with the Goyf. I mean, so Eidolon's basically bought us another turn. Um, because if they draw a green source that doesn't cost them any life. Alright, hopefully. <sighs> Hex Drinker number two. I don't really see the point in leveling that up. Burn spell! Yes! We did it! Woo! Man, the luck never stops. Yeah! Get, oh, he oh, said GG. Never mind, I'm not going to lie. I thought there was a little bit of pouting of that. 20 lands is wrong. So, glad we didn't. Uh, we won the die roll. That's good. like to be on the play with the old burn deck. Um, this hand's really good. We'll keep this. Um, we'll play our mountain because our opponent also keeps seven. No companion. We're gonna play the mountain and hold the fetch land because A, we have Searing Blaze in our hand, and B, if we draw an Inspiring Vantage, we don't have to, uh, we don't have to shock. So, little victories there. Castle Garenbrig is probably not good for us. Um, so we're gonna fetch shock here. And we're going to play Eidolon, um, because no matter what they do, they're going to have to take points off of it. Hey, I'm doing alright, man. Uh, trying to finish out and play in the Mana Trader series some more. Uh, we're 2-0 tonight. Uh, we need 8 wins in a row. So, not looking super promising, but we'll see what we can do. So, a land here would be sweet. Um... going to be honest, I think running out our other Eidolon is really good here because unless they play nothing, great matchup to get that win, huh? Joseph, what are you talking about? Are you talking about this matchup? I mean, I think this matchup's pretty bad, honestly, but... Or maybe that's, maybe that's what you're trying to say, is that this is a rough matchup and it's going to be hard to get a win. So our opponent's at 11... Uh, we're just going to kind of continue to say go here. They can have five mana this turn. Um, I mean, until they get to Titan, a lot of the stuff 
Sarcasm. Yeah, okay, I thought so. I, I was like, okay, Summoner's Pact. You go to 7. I mean, until you get to Titan, like, a lot of their stuff costs 3 or less. Prime time? Oh, yeah, okay. So... Prime time... Probably gonna get like Radiant Fountain and something else, if I had to guess. Yep. Really wish we had a skull crack here. Um, so they go to nine. Uh, Helix puts us to 14 here. Um, so again, a land off the top or a Lava Spike or a Lightning Bolt is lethal. Um, again, we're kind of hoping the top of our deck's good to us. Lightning Bolt's a good draw. So, we go to 10, Bolt puts them to 3. We go to 6, Bolt kills them. Alright. So, it, it's honestly, it's really nice to get a win right there. Uh, this is a hard matchup. This is a hard matchup to win. Um, skull Cracks are really good. Deflecting Palms are really good. And Paths are really good. So, again, we might be over sideboarding. Um, I, I don't play this matchup a lot, so I don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, Eidolons aren't great. Searing Blazes, I think, are very extra medium. Um, honestly, we'd probably rather have the Searing Blazes than the Burns, than the, than the creatures, if I had to guess. Cut a Goblin Guide. Yeah, let's leave in Swiss Spears um, and try it like this. Objections, chat, Joseph mostly, but anybody who has ideas. Uh, Skullcrack's really good, Deflecting Palm's good, and I think Pass really good. I think you have to have an answer for prime time or you lose. So this is one of those matchups where over sideboarding is better than under sideboarding, I feel like. And it, Skullcrack doesn't really work out that often to where you get to, like, Skullcrack their, like, Radiant Fountain, but every now and again you get there. All right, I'm getting no opinion, so... Oh, here we go. Looks right to me. All right, let's run it. Uh, we're up a game against Amulet Titan. I can only assume it's Amulet Titan based on the way the game was going. Uh, so this hand's a little slow. But I think we got to keep this. I don't know. Could be wrong. Ghost quarter. Yep. Uh, Rift bolt. Sego. Um, and if he plays a Zusa here. We can also just Searing Blaze it, so it's not terrible for us. Or am I dead? Alright, I'm not dead. That's good. That's good. Uh, we're going to Rift Bolt um, to 20. Uh, we're going to play our land and say go. And now we can hold skull uh, we can hold up Skullcrack and Helix is the rest of the game. So it's looking pretty good. Uh, they're gonna play Titan right here. I mean, we're we're probably dead here if I had to guess, but between the Valakuts and everything else, we're probably just super dead here. Yeah, it's not looking good for you, boy. You get another land drop, I think. I think he gets another land drop. Now he gets two more land drops. And so, Joseph, you're more of an Amulet Titan player than I am. I, I feel like I, I, I feel like I should have just been dead there. I, I could be wrong, but I feel like that was like ipso facto lethal right there. Man, I don't know. Well, okay. 
I quit trying when they added Valakut. I hate that card. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that card either, if I'm being honest. Alright, so... We want to run out our land. Uh, we can't really Searing Blaze anything. So we know the last card in their hand is a Bounce Land, so they actually have to draw something to do anything with it. I had like half the deck bought at that point. Yeah, I remember you had a lot of a bill, honestly. Uh, I think we're just going to hold up our... Hold up our stuff and play go. And say go. Um, if they brick. Okay. Deal six to us. That's fine. We know the last card in their hand is that bounce land. So they can play that land. Um, bounce the land back to their hand and put us to 11. Yep. And then hopefully we can draw a land and go double searing blaze on the dryad. And if we do, we're really in the driver's seat, I feel like. So... Um, honestly, like a bolt or a skewer, uh, or not a, yeah, a skewer would do it too. Um, there's a, I mean, I was like, he has to pick up that land. Oh, plus two. Okay. Getting busy. Getting busy with the dryad. I like it. Thanks for making dinner, baby. Alright, so we go to 7. Um, we need to draw a land here. We're going to go back to 10, but even if we... We have to find a way to get the Dryad off the field or we're just dead. Alright, land's good. Land plays here. We go to 10. Uh, he's going to fetch for a land and put us to 6. Or, I'm sorry, put us to 3. Yep. So we go to 3, he goes to 4, and creature or land either way works for them. Yeah, I was like, unfortunately, like, yeah, I was like, we drew a land to get that off the field, so if they brick one time here, we're in a good spot. Oh, I thought that was Dryad. I was like, bro. Wait a second, am I still dead here? No, I'm still dead. Sad face. Alright, that's okay. Um, I mean, considering the way that game played out, we can't really complain too much. That's what I was saying. Yeah, see, you were ahead on the counting thing. I was not. So... Oh, well. We did what we could. Alright. So, I think on the play, I think we just kind of want it the way we had it. Um, I really don't like Eidolon. Uh, I've seen... I've seen people... Like, try it, but I just, I don't like it. Palms, Path, Skull Cracks, all necessary. Um, we left in some Swiss beers for being on the play. Uh, let's just run it like this and see what happens. Um, again, we don't have any hate, but this hand's really good. I don't think we can really throw this one back, honestly. Uh, we're just gonna get a mountain here. Play Rift Bolt, say go. Forest into Arboreal Grazer. Arbo Arboreal Grazer is honestly kind of dumb. It's one of those cards I'm really not a fan of. And. Drawing a land there is kind of rough, but that's okay. We have a canopy to try and help us draw out of it. Um, we're going to go to 16 and back to 19 with the Helix. Should be playing Tunnel Ignis. <laughs> I mean, I played that card for a while. You played that card for a while too. I was, I like that card a lot. Um, it just unfortunately just like didn't, couldn't facilitate everything that it needed, that we needed. 
Okay, so... I still think we're going to go upstairs and hope that we draw a way to get the Dryad off the field. Alright, Canyon's not good. Uh, not going to lie to you, that's not what we wanted to see. But we're going to play our Lava Spike and Sego. Um, and we're, we're, we're probably not going to fire off our uh, Bolt here. We're probably going to draw a card and see what happens. Amulet of Vigor, that's probably also not good for us. Explore? Okay. Oh, let's go! He has no more lands! Yes! I don't know what y'all are praying to, but keep fucking praying to it, because it's working tonight. No, you should not go back downstairs. Don't you even make jokes like that. Path! Damn, I love it. I hate Path in this spot. Path is great, but Path also sucks, because we don't want to give him a land. Uh, the good news is that we can just kind of hold it. So, that's not good. I needed you to not have that, please. Uh, play prime time here. So, honestly, this is what I want to know right here. Like, we just path prime time and take six here, right? Why are we still playing this deck without Field of the Dead? Um, I mean, because it's really explosive and good. Yeah, you you think we path prime time and and take eight here and go to nine? Because it's either path prime time right here or don't. So I guess we're taking eleven because of the Valakut. I hit prime time. I mean, I think it's right to hit prime time. Um. Works like half the time, lol. So... Probably gonna return... Alright. This is kinda rough here. Cause... Yeah, this is rough. Well, we might actually just be dead here. Are we just dead here? Did it not matter what we did? Oh no, a boreal grazer? Seriously? Um. Yeah. That sucks. And again, I go back to my point that a Boreal Grazer is, like, in my opinion, like, too good. Like, one mana blocks everything in the format basically for free, and it ramps you. Like, it's honestly really too good. All right. Back to needing 10 wins, which is where we were at when the night started. So that kind of sucks, but... Not really much we can do about it. Um, I've set out to try and qualify this month, so we're going to try and stick to it and get there. Thanks for making dinner. Oh, it tastes phenomenal. No, I haven't eaten at all yet. Yeah. Tastes great. Did you put something spicy in it? Yeah, you did. I can see that look on your face. I thought it tasted spicier than normal. I am not a guinea pig. Yeah. Um, so we're on the draw. Uh, our opponent has no companion. Our hand's really good. Well, 
our hand's really good if they're playing creatures and not if they're playing blue-white control, but we're going to keep it anyway. All right, opponent goes to six. Okay, that means they either want to bolt us or they're going to push or bolt our goblin guide here, but I think we're going to run it into it anyway. Um, so it's more than likely the red-black shadow list. If I had to guess. Or it's not the red-black shadow list. Cycle Forgotten Cave. I... Sometimes I wonder what format we're playing. Between the whole Tron Boggle thing... Oh, it's Jund. Okay, makes more sense. Alright. We're back now. No, it's not. It's Dredge. It's gotta be Dredge. No! Ha ha! Hit nothing. That's what you get. Stupid Dredge players. You have no idea how much I hate this deck. Like, I hate playing against Dredge. Alright, so ironically, if they don't hit 20 Creeping Chills, our hand is great. We have no sideboard hate for this. And I mean zero. Alright, so it's not looking good. Um, our opponent's on Narc Amoeba, which is, like, if they're wanting to, like, shock in a Steam Vance to run out of Narc Amoeba. We're going to hold up our fetch land. Oh, excuse me. So we can Searing Blaze something? Oh, yeah, you keep drawing cards like the rest of us, buddy. That's right, take a draw step. No, not another one. Opponent. Stop. Oh, Ox? Oh, no, that's not good. It means he gets to discard his hand, right? Discard your hand and draw three cards. Yeah, that's not good. Everything was looking okay for a minute. Ugh, stop. See? And, and just like that, the two creeping chills have ended the game. What? Uh-huh. So, alright. So I spent a lot of time talking shit about this, but what are, like, what are we going to do here? We're going to fetch. We're going to Searing Blaze the Ox. He's going to put one prized amalgam into play, which is okay. We're okay with that. Um, we're going to play Sunbait Canyon. We're going to Searing Blaze this to get in more points. Put you to 10. Um, we're going to attack for two. Concede? Should probably just concede. <laughs> Took you like three tries to type concede there, didn't it, Joseph? Bloodstained Mire, like whatever. So they go to eight. We're going to put him to five here, um, and we have seven points in our hand. So, I mean, I, like, took you 12 minutes to figure out it was Dredge. Listen, Joseph, don't come at me with that trash, and you stop laughing back there in the background. So he's going to ox here. And he has to hit a creeping chill and he's going to kill us, right? Like, it's inevitable. Creeping chill gives everything haste. And then we lose. Right? Yeah. 
Oh, I missed once. What? Say what? Do you have another ox in there? Ah, oh, he has another ox. Damn it. See, even when dredge bricks, you can't beat it. Not with burn, anyway. Oh, conflagrate three five seven nine. That's disappointing. See, we need a force of charm. A force of charm. I don't. I don't know what that means. All right. Well. Um. Yeah, our entire hand sucks. Our entire deck sucks against this. Exile a red card, deal four. I'd play that. Uh, Firewalker's not really good. Path seems mediocre. I'm going to be honest. It's been so long since I've played a uh, played against Dredge. I don't remember what to cut. You want Eidolons on the play? I think we're going to cut Boros Charms. See if it's any good. I don't know. Could be wrong. We'll try it and see what happens. Is she using the stairs at all? Really? How about that? Palm doesn't seem bad. <clears throat> it's mostly like two mana, deal three. Um, I mean, this hand's extremely aggressive. This hand has turn three potential. So, we're going to keep it. Hope it works out. Well, we're going to concede. Um, yeah. Our dredge opponent is playing Leyline. I, I, does somebody genuinely have an answer as to why? Their burn matchup is like 80-20. Them. They don't care about discard effects. They're putting dredge cards into their graveyard. I don't. Stops crypts and such. Ah! It does, doesn't it? How about that? I never thought about that. Alright. Uh, hi and good luck. Alright, we're on the play. <clears throat> so... I don't know. What do you guys think? You keep this on the play? Playing the 20 land deck? I don't know. You got you got three good one drops. And if you draw a land, you have Eidolon on two? Snap keep. Alright. Should, no, do, yes. Absolutely. That is how I feel about it too, Joseph. Alright, our opponent takes a mulligan. Hopefully we're not playing against Dredge again. Probably just going to cry myself to sleep if that happens. Alright, our opponent's on six. <clears throat> Lead on the old goblin guide. Get our uh, skyclave apparition. Alright, we're playing against spirits. This is real bad, real quick. Temple garden, yep. Yep, 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 yep. So, 
do you guys like land like Swiss beer both? Put you to eleven, or do you like Eidolon? I think I think Eidolon's better. Spear, Bolt to Hierarch. Okay, I'm down to try that. I'd personally play Eidolon on that spot. Um, so we're going to attack first to give them the chance to block. See if they want to. <clears throat> I doubt they will, but you never know. Sometimes you get lucky. Alright, let's do it. Against Spirits, Eidolon. Yeah, I would have played Eidolon too there. But I'm interested to see how it works out. I always like to play other people's... <sighs> what? What? Eidolon is bad because you know he has Skyclave? We do know he has Skyclave, but if he plays Skyclave, then we get to play Swiss Spear, Bolt to Skyclave, and then we have 6 power on board, and we get to attack that way, was my train of thought. So, Luminarch Aspirant is an interesting one. Um... I think we're going to Helix this and put him to 7. Um, I'm thinking this is Heliod Company the longer we play. More than likely, definitely Heliod Company, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I mean, the fact that Heliod's on top does help us with that. Alright, an easy concession, we take that. Um, okay. Alright. Okay. So, Path is really good. And Skullcrack is really good. Um, I don't really think we want Deflecting Palm. I don't think Deflecting Palm really does anything. I guess you could, in some weird, crazy way, make the argument for playing Smash to Smithereens. But I also don't think that's the way you go about that. Um, Boros Charm doesn't interact in any way. And I know that Skullcrack doesn't interact, interact in any way, but it also stops the combo. Um, and then we'll cut some Lava Spikes. No, actually, I think we want to cut some creatures. Um, wait till he slams the Warship. I mean... <laughs> If they slam worship, like, all we can do is, like, try to kill all their stuff. Like, there's nothing to do except cry. Um, I don't really like creatures in matchups like this. Uh, most people are playing four main deck, um, Skyclave Apparition in this deck, so. Maybe we cut another guide and leave in a charm. Try to help the race. Now yeah, let's try it like this and see what happens. <clears throat> All right, we're on the draw here. So our opponent mulligans, this hand is Landlight and has minimal interaction, but it has a Skullcrack. I feel like this is a mulligan. What do you guys think? I think we mulligan this. There's not really a lot of interaction or anything, so. All right, we're not getting an answer. We're going to mulligan. Oh, right. if you draw a land, it probably wins. I mean, we're on the draw. You think we win if we keep this on the draw with if we draw a land? Yeah, we're playing 20 lands. Let's do it. And then our opponent's going to, like, you know, slam a ley line or something crazy. And then I'm going to cry again. All right, our opponent's on six. Probably if you miss land, you're screwed, though. No, well, that's okay. Good with the bad. Good with the bad. Woo! Immediate hit. Viper's coming down. Uh, we're going to fetch shock here. Probably not right. We probably should have just fetched a mountain there. Um, uh, I, think that, I think this deck does play paths, though, so I'd like to leave up for path just in case. Uh, I'm probably going to Temple Garden tapped here. 
You know what card I wish they just give us in modern one time? Price of progress. Like I just I just wish they'd give us price of progress. Giver of runes? Okay. So we fetch Doc for nothing. Our, like one of our first draw steps shows us that. Um, I think we're going to Helix the Giver. Um, whole format would lose to Burn. Yeah, honestly. like You'd have to start running timely reinforcements in the main if that was the case. Um, I think we're just going to go ahead and, and fire off a Helix. Um, I know it's not super aggressive and going for the win immediately, but... Path here? Okay. Yeah, we'll take the basic. Um... And then they've got four cards after they draw, and we're looking at 12 points, so we gotta find a few points, but it's looking okay. Well, there's two points. Noble Hierarch, into Luminarch Aspirant, okay. Luminarch Aspirant, I mean, sure, you have a 1-2. I think against my deck, I would have rather have had a 2-2 there, but... Um... We're going to kill the Aspirant here. It helps them combo. And then we're going to hold up Skullcrack. Um, and we're actually not going to play anything if they do. Like, even if... Well, I guess technically if they don't do anything, we should just slam it. We should just slam Skullcrack here because we get to untap and win. Oh, yeah. You serving up too? Yeah, get busy. Let's go. I love when people make attacks like that, dude. Um, so I'm going to be honest. I don't really know what we're losing to here. So we're just going to go for it. We're up a game anyway. Might as well. They're probably going to have like weather the storm here and make me cry. Which would straight up be hilarious. Um, and they don't have collected company because... I mean, they would have not attacked with their Noble Hierarch. Okay. Alright. Yep. Yeah. You got nothing? You got nothing? Huh? You got nothing? Yeah, you got nothing. Like, right when it started, Feather was really good. So, we won a bunch of, like, we won them. We didn't win the tournament, but we, we qualified. And then the other time we tried, uh, we didn't do so hot. It was pretty rough, honestly. It was during a standard. Um, during our standard season. And then now we're trying this one. So we're hoping it goes pretty well. Um, our opponent kept seven, no companion. Our hand's really good. We're going to keep, see what happens. Our hand's really bad. We just lost this game. Yep, we definitely just lost this game. Because... Do you know what Eidolon does on the play, or on the draw, against Tron? Nothing. Nothing. It's worse than the Sunbait Canyons in our hand. Especially since he snapped off seven, and, you know. Odd? Alright. Maybe we're back. I doubt it, but maybe we're back. Okay. If we keep drawing lands, we're definitely not back. Um... I know we, we should probably fetch to try and thin, but I, I really don't want to because we want to hold a fetch for the Searing Blaze. Karn, okay. So the good news is that they can't play Karn this next turn. Alright, they don't want the Karn anyway. They have a Maze Mind Tome? Ugh. This guy is trash if he doesn't have two Thought Knots. Yeah, I mean, he's got to have Thought Knots you here, I imagine. Um... We're still going to run out of Eidolon and hope he doesn't. Um, uh, it's, so, the difference on us being on the play and draw here is insane. Like, Thought Not Seer! Yeah, there it is. Take our Searing Blaze. At least I imagine he takes our Searing Blaze.
Okay. Um, I, I, I'm not going to say that's wrong, because I don't know what's in his hand. Um, good draw step. Good draw step. We take those. We go to 18. We're going to play our canyon. Um, we're going to attack for 6, and if he doesn't block, then, you know, cool on you. Searing Blaze doesn't kill anything. I mean... Searing Blaze doesn't kill anything, but when he blocks here, Searing Blaze is still three points, and it allows us to... Uh, Searing Blaze is three points and allows us to draw a card. Narwhal is the leading Eldrazi expert. It kills Matter Shaper, the mother of all Eldrazi. <laughs> How are you, Taylor? I don't think I've talked to you since uh, last week. It ironically feels like a lot longer than that, I won't lie. Um, so hopefully he's, uh, gonna block Thought, or block, um, Eidolon here. Um, which tells us two things. One, that he doesn't have Reality Smasher he's wanting to slam. And, uh, um, I don't know. Two, something else that I'm not smart enough to know because the doy I play Burn. So he goes to 12. We don't have to take any off that. We get to Searing Blaze him to 9 and draw a card. Um, it's pretty good for us. So, hopefully we draw something good. Skewer's really good because it... I have had three tests in two weeks, but it's all good now. Oh my god. Three tests. Dude, that sounds miserable, man. How'd you do on your test? You do good? I mean, if laziness has been restored, then I imagine you have to feel pretty good and want to take a break. Five? Was I wrong? Are we just running out of Reality Smasher? Was I just straight up wrong? Do, 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 do. I was just straight up wrong. Okay. Um, please attack. So we're going to fetch. D is for Diploma. <laughs> uh, good enough. Bees get degrees last time I checked. You're not wrong. Bees do in fact get degrees. Um, so I don't really think there's a way we die here. Um, we're going to put him to 6 and then put him to 2. And then we have 4 power in play. Um, and he doesn't really have a way to gain life either. Uh, power plant's fine. I mean mine's also fine. He can't assemble Tron in one turn. So Okay. Take four, go to two, um, and then we have two canopies, and one on the field and one on our hand. So, I mean, it feels like we're in a pretty good spot here. Blast Zone is pretty good. Um, we also know that he has four of his cards in his hand we know about. Um, right? Right, because he fetched away the Karn. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's what happened. Yeah, so, I mean... He can play Chalice on one and play Maze Mind Tome if he wants. But then if he does that, he's just dead on board, so he can't do that. So he plays Maze he plays Chalice on one to lock out part of our deck and then blows up Blast Zone and attacks. Blast Zone into Worm Coil. Yeah, I mean Worm Coil would be pretty good here. Okay, so he's gonna attack. He's gonna play Chalice on one, and then he's gonna hold up Blast Zone. <laughs> it's been long enough. You're back now. You want some? Okay. Yeah, but I like the box better. I can't help that I like the box better. Um, I'm going to be honest. I'm not really sure why our opponent didn't play Chalice there. So we're going to do this. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe he's holding Warping Well so we can counter a sorcery. All right. Maybe he had nothing and uh, we just win. All right. Cards that are good against Eldrazi Tron. Deflecting Palm. Smash to smithereens. Real question. Do you guys want burn? Like, do you guys want path here? I don't, I don't feel like 
path is really good enough. Um, cards that I hate in this matchup are Eidolon. Um, Eidolon's bad. Our creatures are bad. They don't really do anything. Um, I don't know. Do you do you guys want path here? I don't. I don't. This man doesn't know Etron if he doesn't have Basilisk Collar in the wishboard. I always bring on draw. Okay. All right. Do you bring in all three or do you just bring in a couple? Like, is that like an all three kind of thing or just a couple of them? Guess we could bring all three and cut our usually two. All right. Bring in two pass. Cut a couple of goblin guides. Try this. I don't really like creatures. I like to finish the game with burn spells. I like to be able to hold up all of our instant speed interaction. Um, yeah, let's run out like that and see what happens. Uh, there's probably some argument to cut Searing Blaze here, but I like to cut one drops in this matchup and Eidolon because Eidolon sucks. I feel like uh, this hand is the Stone Cold Nuts. We're going to keep this. Our opponent also keeps seven. Uh, the only thing that this can't beat is... See, man, being on the play right there is so good because you just get to smash that thing on the play. Um, we're going to go ahead and suspend Rift Bolt because we have a way to beat Chalice if they slam it. So um, if we didn't have a smash in our hand, um, I would uh, I would play a Lava Spike right there. I probably wouldn't play a Lava Spike. I'd probably just wait and say go. Chalice on one is great. Um, we get to put them to 17. I um, probably should have played the canyon there to hold up uh, fetch land for to hold up fetch land for searing blaze later. Oh, ignore the O. All right, Joseph, ignoring your O. Um, Eldrazi Temple's pretty good. Slam I thought not seer, which is fine. Um, we have to do this in response because if we don't, like, it's gonna be a long game. Um, hopefully he doesn't take our Searing Blaze again. I mean, if he does, like, cool. Take a Bolt. Okay, that makes sense. Math checks out. So... Is it worth it to kill the Thought Not Seer and get an extra card here? What do you guys think? Do we kill Thought Not Seer or not? Or do we just play Searing Blaze and suspend Rift Bolt? Or do we play the do we spin Rift Bolt, play Spike, hold up Bolt, and then hold up Searing Blaze? Um, that puts them at a virtual five with three points in our hand. And then even Reality Smasher kills us in three turns, not two. Um, I'm gonna Searing Blaze here, and then I'm gonna spin Rift Bolt. I think I'd rather have the points. Because even if we draw, like, we're just taking their clock off the field, and I, well, I guess, I guess Reality Smasher is a two-turn clock, considering that we have, that they have, um, that we have the canyon. Hopefully they don't play Chalice on one. If they do, we'll probably just cry. Okay, just drew Natty Tron. Karn. Get that Trinis Trinisphere. Yeah, get Trinisphere. I imagine. Basilisk Collar, maybe. And if he gets Basilisk Collar, we cry.
because with Tron on board, he can play it and equip it. Alright, so obviously it's not Basilisk Collar, because... Reality Smasher? Matter Reshaper? Okay. I, uh... I don't know, this has been a weird... This has been weird, um... So, yeah, I, I don't, we, we have a lot of outs here um, at winning the game. Skewer, Spike, Bolt, um, yeah, that's really it, but still a lot of cards. Uh, Deflecting Palm is also a really good draw. Our opponent's really taken about some of these decisions here. Get another tower, okay. Now I'm at 14. Maybe he does something and takes a damage? Um, Reality Smasher doesn't want in the game, but he can notably play Smasher and Wormcoil Engine if he has it, so... I'm convinced there's no way that he has Basilisk Collar, Basilisk Collar in his sideboard because he would have grabbed it already. But I've been wrong before. People make bad plays all the time, including myself. I've been doing it a lot lately. Okay, play the tower. You have Worm Coil and either five or six mana. Depending on if you're playing in Eldrazi or not. Do 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 do. Where did it call me? I forgot. Oh. Do, do. Alright, our opponent's really in the tank here. Play your worm coil. Yep, play your worm coil. You got it, bro. I'm at seven. Please don't have a Thought Nazi here. I'm not gonna lie, Thought Nazi here is kind of bad because it gives us two two outs to to win the game. So. Okay. Thought you were going to do that earlier, but. Do, 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 do. Activated abilities. Unless they're mana abilities. 
So you get to look at my hand and then lose. And I guess the last card in your hand can still be Thought Knots here. So we get to name Sunbake Canyon here. All right, come on, buddy. You've used like six more minutes of your clock than I have. This is kind of getting out of hand. Okay. We go to six, you go to one. Bolt you. Yep, I go to five, you go to... Alright, we're on the play. Always good when you're playing the old burn deck. We're gonna play first. Um, our hand's great. We'll keep this. Wish one of those was a fast land, but... Oh, we're playing against Luris. Uh, Boggles or... Means we're playing against Boggles or we're playing against the Red Black Shadow deck. Uh, more than likely the Red Black Shadow deck. Um, but we have played against Boggles twice in the past like two or three nights. So I'm not going to rule it out. Um, we'll shock. You can join us at 18 opponent. Into the story. Oh, is this Rogues? Somebody trying to make rogues a modern deck? Okay. Oh boy, sorry. Sorry! It didn't look like it was going in at first, I'm sorry. From where I was, it was hard to tell. Is this Mill? It is Mill. Um, normally, I... I think we just need to go ahead and get this thing off the field. I don't like for them to have a crab. Um, so, we're going to do that and get in for two. Then they, Okay, so, the landfall crab is fine because, I mean, like, I mean, like again, I know they're both landfall crabs, but the O2 is fine and the O3 is not because... Because, I mean, the O3 just blocks infinitely. Um... So that's a really good draw step. And maybe just actual mill. Yeah, I think it's just actual mill. Um, you probably said that a minute ago. Sorry, I'm... Um, we're just going to go ahead and Searing Blaze this. Um... Okay. Get a field of ruin. An opponent has twenty. Oh, so it's just a cantrip. Um, they're at nine. We have seven in our hand. Um, I know they play that three mana card that like gains life for each creature. Or something like that, so. Play Field of Ruin. Okay. Goblin God's a good pickup here. Um, <clears throat> we're going to attack for six and then put him to three. Crypt Incursion? Okay, yeah, see, there you go. Is that card an instant? Do you know? Cling to dust? Okay, cling to dust is also an option here. It is an instant? Okay, I did not know that, so that's good to know. Okay, so they go to five. Um, we're going to suspend Rift Bolt and say go. 
Uh, we we played that way and had a little bit of a mana uh, mana inefficient turn because if they don't have a removal spell there, we can just play and say go. I imagine they're gonna cling to dust a creature in response here and kind of negate this. Because uh, if not, they're at two. Okay, all right. So we can pretty much just attack here and then force them to do something because we have lethal in our hand. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay with letting the mana go, like... Alright, so we get the first game. <sighs> I think we really just want Skullcracks here. You know, honestly, normally in this matchup I cut all my Searing Blazes. Um, and it, it's probably still right to cut all the Searing Blazes, but with them having Burn Monkey saying good luck, have fun, QQ, I, I'm, alright, I'm a monkey for playing Burn. Oh god. Alright, so... Normally I'd cut Searing Blazes, someone salty. Yeah, I was like, obviously they're a little unhappy, but that's okay. They can be unhappy about it. Um, I don't know if I want Eidolons on the draw. Bring in one of the Smash? Okay. Uh, so what do you cut for a fifth card if you're bringing in a one of Smash? Rift Bolt? Alright. Oh god. Drove right by it. Let's try it like that. Yeah. I like it. Do you want the smash just for the just for the mesmeric orb or whatever it's called? Is that the only reason you want it? Okay, well, Or is there something else I'm not aware of? Uh this hand's great, we'll keep this. Yeah, just the orb. Okay. I mean, it makes sense. This hand's really good. Our opponent mulligans the six. Dark Slick Shores. Play the crab. So if they don't have another crab here, we're wasting a bolt. Um, but I think it's worth it to try and control the pace of the game. They can't really get their engine going and they're on a mulligan. So. So they do have another one, so. Wasn't for not. Surgical or lightning bolts? Alright, cool. Alright. So we're going to untap and Searing Blaze this. Um, no reason to let them have more cards. Drawing another Searing Blaze isn't exactly great because there's probably not a lot of creatures left in their deck. But that's the chances we take with leaving all four in. Um... Maybe, maybe it's right to cut one? Put Luris into your hand? Okay. So I'm not going to lie, with them putting Luris into their hand, I'm honestly pretty interested in suspending Rift Bolt. 
and playing Lava Spike and holding our land so that we can guarantee Searing Blaze. Um, could be wrong, but... They get to play the Crab here, which is fine. Um, we'll probably Rift Bolt the Crab. I don't know. With two cards in their hand, do you think we bolt the crab, or do we just kind of let that go? Um, I say we keep it off the field. We can control the pace of the game. Bolt the crab. Okay, so we're on the same page there. Um, we would have drawn a land anyway, but I still think we made the right play um, to hold like that. <clears throat> Just kind of playing like burn control right now. Vision of Beyond. Just cycling. Play Crab. Okay. So we did have a land if we left the Crab on the field, okay? So good call on bolting the Crab. I'm right, just going to hold that up. Um, gonna play the Islet and say go so that we can, uh, crack it to draw a card. Because we can crack, draw a card, and... I guess we can crack now to see if we draw, uh, interaction of some kind. Alright, so we didn't, so that's okay. Let him return it. Let him get uh, two more cards off of us. Or is it three? No, three cards. Okay. Um, they might have a Drown in the lock in their hand. We'll go upstairs with the Boros Charm. Okay. I don't think decks like this play Thoughtseize or anything, but... So we either go upstairs and take their Vista off the field, or we kind of hold our spells. I don't really think they... I'm not really interested in killing the Crab from here. Um, I think we'll just say go here. Just kind of let it sit for now. Rather, I mean, I know they haven't played a Crypt Incursion yet, but if they do play it, they get quite a bit off of it. So they're going to return a Boro at the end of the turn, which is fine. I mean, and if they ever fetch, they're putting themselves in, in lethal range, which is nice because, I mean... Alright, we need that to hit some lands, deck. Um, we're going to fetch at the end of the turn. Get a Sacred Foundry. So I'm going to attack first here. Because if they don't block... Okay, so they're going to. And we're going to Skull Crack. Um, because we get to get the crab off the field. Uh, bottom? Don't really have any interest in doing something like that. And we'll just go ahead and fire it off. If they have a counter spell, they probably play it here to stop us from... <laughs> Uh, making their land lethal at any time, so. Yep. So, are there any Searing Blazes left? We've played two, right? Yeah, we've played two, so there's two left in the deck, so I'm actually going to hold the fetch land here. Um... Uh, we're gonna. F yeah, we're just gonna draw and see what happens. 
Um, and this is lethal, so we're just going to go for it. Alright, cool. I'm going to say GG's. Just get the right person. Alright, we're on the play. We've won a lot of die rolls tonight, which is really good. That's something you really like to see when you're playing burn. Um, Alright, uh, having no lands is an obvious mulligan. Uh, this hand's a lot better. We'll put the Sacred Foundry on the bottom. We got a one drop into multiple two drops, so... Oh, good luck, you two. Alright. Our opponent has no companion of note. <clears throat> Uh, we'd like to have a goblin guide or something here, but um, we're going to keep that, ship that. Our opponent keeps seven. Um, we're going to go ahead and fire off our lava spike. Let them know real quick what we're up to. Elves! Okay. Lana or Elf. Um, and this is where Searing Blaze is great. <laughs> Alright. Uh, draw. Uh, we'll save the fetch land. Uh, you never know when you might. We might need a second white source. We might need to fetch for a Searing Blaze again. A pretty good start to be on the play like that. Probably play a couple one drops here if I had to guess. Heritage Druid and an Edel Sentinel, okay. So. We have 10 points in our hand. And. I'm not going to lie, normally I would be all about bolting the Heritage Druid, but it's tough for me to say that bolting the Heritage Druid is... I don't know. What do you think, chat? I don't... I think we can just try to end the game here. You guys have a preference on what we're doing here? Yeah. I personally think we're just trying to go upstairs. End this man's career. All right. Go upstairs it is. You create a 1-1 one, one token. Only trigger that once a turn. Elvis Arch Druid, I guess. Dwin ends elite? Okay. So he's uh he's about to go off here. Okay, but you can pay the instant that's the one thing you'd be worried about playing the game. So he gets to make a one one. Yeah, he's about to have a big turn, so we're really hoping the talk of our deck is good to us. Oh, that said activate. Oh, it makes another 1-1 one, one off to win and delete to Collected Company right here. Well, sometimes they watch, like, a couple Enters the battlefield, choose a creature type from the top of your library. Alright, well, that's a pretty cool card. Especially for three. I mean, 
This is the second time I played against this elf deck in like the last like two or three days, so I'm kind of surprised. Okay. Collected company. That's pretty good. Holy God. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Okay. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. So we're going to go to nineteen. Right, I hate the way the stack sets up. And we're just going to Helix in. We're st I mean, we're sticking to the plan. We're too far in at this point to not go for the, the win here. So this puts us to 22 and takes us out of range of dying. So... Okay, Heritage Druid. Metal Sentinel. Now he gets to attack for two. He's playing off the top here, so I guess he could keep going if he has more stuff to do. He's going to keep going, okay. My god. What a turn this man's had. Alright, hopefully he's out of cards on top. I mean, he played that one from his hand, so I kind of think he is, but... What a turn. Alright, we're at two, Chief. Hoping the deck's... Well, only if we bolted that druid. I mean, honestly, though, like, we bolt that druid and none of this happens, so. I still like what, I still like what we picked. I like to live and die by the sword. Woo! That's right. The hits just keep coming tonight. Man, if I was him, I'd be upset about that. Easy money, that's right. Um, so, path is really good. Um, I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be honest. Not a huge fan of Eidolon. Um, Deflecting Palm is very hit or miss in this matchup. Um, <laughs> hey, thanks, Dylan. Um, maybe bring in a Deflecting Palm. Is Palm better than Boros Charm? I guess that's a that's the real question here. Joseph said yes. All right, that was quick. Joseph snapped off yes, and cut a Boros Charm. All right, let's try it like that. We're up a game. Being on the play there was really good. Uh, this hand's really good. We'll keep this. Opponent also keeps seven. They're going to play Elvish Mystic. So... The question is, do we bolt that and force them to have I think we bolt this. What do you guys think? Do we bolt the do we bolt the the bird as it were? No. Nah, Twiff, sorry. Like you haven't led me wrong so far, man, so <laughs> I'm gonna keep playing cards. Oh yeah, six, sorry. All 
All right, we gotta we gotta move the stack. I don't I don't know why I moved that there, but it's gonna drive me crazy. Stack's normally over here. So, we're gonna go upstairs. We're gonna skewer you. Attack for three, and then we have Helix and Path next turn. Which I like. <clears throat> Heritage Druid? Alright, dumb turn incoming. Collected company, all right. Oh, Lord. I'm tired tonight. Twins Elite and the Make an Elf guy, so they get to make two guys right here, I think. I think that's how that works. Yeah, okay, it does see off company. I don't know what the last two cards in their hand are, but okay. put a lot of power into play. That's a lot of mana. Yeah, that is definitely a lot of mana. I'm, I'm hoping he has nothing to do with it. Not likely, but we're hoping. Hopefully it's not the play off the top guy. Um, Elvish Arch Druid is also really bad. There are, honestly, there's a lot of cards that are rough for us right here. Another Heritage Druid, okay. Heritage Druid doesn't really do anything in this spot. They've already been able to produce an absurd amount of mana, so... Collected company number two? Yeah, all right. Two collected companies is pretty good, Hoss. Um, and then put everything back, and the bottom shelf is different. Well, like, uh, into pictures of Heritage Druid. Yeah, that's what I thought, right? So those go back to what they were before. Arch Druid. Oh, and another way, war. Warmaster, Waymaster, whatever it's called. Okay. So we can path the Arch Druid. And then if we do that, we're looking at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay, and we're at 17. If they don't block and we brick here. Yeah, I don't know why you listen. Or I guess we have to fetch shock again to do that, so... We're gonna say go. Um, if they brick here, they can't untap their Nettle Sentinel, which is nice. So. They pill a company? Ugh! No! No, that's so bad! Oh, God. Ugh. We just dead. That's like super lethal, right? Oh man, that's... Alright, so... 
War Caller can pump the team. Yeah, I was like, there was a lot of bad outs for me there, like a bad draws for me there for them. But we were playing around the fact that they bricked right there, that they drew a land. They haven't drawn a third land once, by the way. So that would be nice just once. Um, and I think on the play, Adelon's better than Boros Charm. Uh, I'm not sure what that is. Uh, being able to slam Eidolon on two is really good. So <laughs> we're going to bring in the Eidolons and see what we can do. Let's try it. We're on the play for game three here. This hand's really good. We're going to keep this. Lead on Swiss Spear here. And then we have Se Searing Blaze to follow up. Um, I mean, this is potentially... I don't think it's quite turn three, but it could be. Yep. You got an Elvish Mystic, bro. Yeah. Um, we'd really like to draw a land here. Draw like a, a fetch land and inspiring vantage. Don't really know what their lines of play are here that are bad for us, but. Them playing the Peatland is pretty good for us, though. It means they're forced to take a damage if they're going to play either two spells this turn or play a two mana spell. The only thing I can think of that's really bad for us here is Collector Brutality, and it's very possible that they have that at their sideboard. Um, but... Uh, we're, I'm not going to lie, we're really just kind of hoping that that ain't it. So... All right, they're obviously really in the tank about what they should be doing this turn, so. Elvish Mystic Sego. So I think the play here is to Lava Spike, skewer this. They're, all, they're playing one card a turn, so we really want to keep their stuff off the field. We get to put them to eight, and we have six we have six points in a deflecting palm in our hand. So this this feels pretty good. Um, go to seven. So I think it's better to attack here because Bolt plus Swiss Spear is five and then the Skewer is eight. And they're probably wanting to leave all of their cards. Okay, um, I'm fine with that, but I still think it's better to put them to one here because it means they can't activate their Peatland. And they haven't played a third land yet, so yeah. And we don't have a burn spell we can cast, but any land that's not basic mountain does it, so. Oh, I should be wearing my compression socks. Or any 